Somebody yes, sir. Yeah. So in the last class, uh, we have uh, discussed the introductory part of uh, fiber optic technology. Optical frequencies are extremely large, which are of the order of 24 or 15 hertz when compared with conventional radio waves and microwaves. So instead of using radio waves or microwaves as the data carrier waves, suppose we use optical pulses or light waves as carrier waves, all information can be sent. Uh, consisting of data because the bandwidth is very high and uh, without any time lag. So this is the advantage in taking the uh, optical pulses as a um, carrier waves and um, this is the advantage but the problem is how to propagate the optical pulses in a given medium. So there the optical fiber comes into a picture. Optical fiber is a long, hairy, thin cylindrical structure consisting of uh, core and cladding. So, the main two parts of optical fiber is it has a two coaxial region. The inner region is a light guiding core, and the outer region is called as a cladding. The refractive index of core is more than that of cladding. The principle behind the construction of optical fiber is photon and refraction. So, when the light travels from the excel medium to the radar medium, if the angle of incidence is more than critical angle, again the uh, light ray enters in the same tensor medium. This phenomenon is called as a total internal reflection. By using this principle, light can be guided through an optical fiber cable. So initially, the light ray enters the left end of the optical fiber and uh, it gets refracted. Again, with the, after refraction, it travels in the core medium and the incident on the core guiding in that case. Because of the refractive indices values, the core acts as a denser medium with respect to cladding. So if the angle at the core cladding interface is more than critical angle, it suffers total internal refraction, again it uh, comes in the same core medium. In the bottom portion, again it strikes the core cladding interface. Here also the condition for total internal refraction is satisfied. So it goes in the upward direction. In this way, the ray suffers multiple reflections and it can be transmitted from one end of the optical fiber to the other end of the optical fiber. So this is how the light can be propagated through an optical fiber. So simply it is not a light wave, it is coupling with some data. So data can be transferred from one end of the cable to the other end of the cable. The advantage is in taking the optical fiber cable is uh, when the optical pulses the high bandwidth and there is no electromagnetic interference, low cost, easily portable and uh, with the high speed the transmission losses are very less to compare with the conventional radio waves and microwaves, these are the advantages. So we use optical pulses as information, information carrying waves and further you need a transmission channel that is nothing but optical fiber. So coming to the structure of the optical fiber, as I explained, it consists of two coaxial regions, core and cladding, and uh, again it is surrounded by another layer uh, to give protection, so which is a protecting layer and the final layer is coated with the polyurethane and which absorb shocks and uh, even during bending, during inspiration, the core and cladding will not um, be destroyed like that. The structure is uh, fabricated. So, optical fiber will serve the purpose of uh, carrying the data in the form of optical pulses for, from one place to another place. This we have uh, discussed uh, in the last class. Now, but uh, there are two parameters involved. Uh, for optical fiber technology, one is the numerical aperture and the second one is uh, the acceptance angle. So today we will discuss what actually is numerical aperture and acceptance angle of an optical fiber. Is this uh, slide is visible students? You please take this diagram, numerical aperture and you take this diagram. Make it fast, I'll explain uh, what actually is the aperture and the small derivation is also there. Is it visible, boys? Please respond, somebody? Yes, sir. Take this figure.
xa is the incident light ray alpha is angle of incidence theta is angle of refraction in the pore medium and the theta c is the angle of incidence at the pore clearing interface n1 is the refractive index of pore and n2 is the refractive index of cladding n1 is greater than n2 Shall we start explanation, girls? Yes, sir. For this thing, you can uh, take a picture right now. So, numerical aperture it represents the light gathering capacity of an optical fiber. So, how much light that can be collected by an optical fiber, or how much light can be confined within the optical fiber? So that it can be propagated from one end of the optical fiber to the other end of the optical fiber can be represented by a physical quantity known as, known as a numerical aperture. So numerical aperture, it is the measure of the ability or capacity of an optical fiber to confine or collect the light, the instant light ray inside it. So how much light it is that can be collected by an optical fiber can be measured by a physical quantity which is known as numerical aperture. It is the basic property of optical fiber and it is a dimensionless quantity and the value is less than 1. So to understand this, let us consider an optical fiber as the as you know the fabrication of optical fiber is consistent of inner region pore and outer region is cladding. So let us assume it is an optical fiber. In this the inner region is core of refractive index N1 and it is surrounded by another coaxial region which is called as cladding and the refractive index of cladding is N2 and N1 is greater than N2. That means core acts as a denser medium related due to the cladding. To understand the concept of numerical aperture, let us consider an light ray incident at the left end of the optical fiber by making an angle alpha with the axis of the fiber. You can see x is the incident ray, it is making an angle of alpha with respect to the axis of the fiber. Here, the ray gets refracted and it makes an angle of refraction theta, you can see in the diagram, and again it is at the point B. So AB is the refracted ray, and at B, the medium is it is um, moving from denser medium to rarer medium, which is the core cladding interface. So here, the incident ray uh, is represented by theta C. And if this theta C, the angle of incidence, because the light ray head is traveling from denser medium to rarer medium, so if the angle of incidence is beyond the critical angle, total internal reflection takes place, again it comes in the same core medium. So this process continues and the light ray suffers multiple reflections and it can be propagated from one end of the optical fiber to the other end of the optical fiber. So further consider the light ray XA making an angle of alpha with respect to the axis of the fiber, it gets refracted and it is making an angle theta, angle of refraction theta with the axis of the fiber. This refracted ray is represented by AB. Again, it is at point B. Hey, here, the light is moving from denser medium to rarer medium. The point B is called as core cladding interface, which separates core and cladding. Here, it makes an angle theta C as shown in the figure. If this theta C is more than critical angle, the condition for total internal reflection is satisfied. The light ray can be propagated from one end of the optical fiber to the other end by suffering multiple reflections. The same I have explained here. So consider a light ray XA incident on optical fiber. The reflective index of the core is N1, that of cladding is N2. When a light ray enters the fiber with an angle of, let us assume, uh, making an angle of incidence alpha, alpha is also called as uh, acceptance angle. It gets refracted and again makes an angle theta with the axis of the fiber. After refraction, the ray um, AB incident on core cladding interface. With uh, making an angle theta C with the normal. From Snell's law, you know that uh, uh, using Snell's law, mu1 sin i is equal to mu2 sin r. The same we are applying here, n sin alpha. It is the refractive index of A, and alpha is the 
and you know incidence for the light ray at the left end of optical fiber this is equal to m1 sin theta n1 is the refractive index of core and theta is the angle of refraction so n sin of is breaking sir Is it okay? Voice is audible now? Yes, okay. sir. Is, is it audible now? So, students? Yes, sir. Okay. So, from Snell's law, n sin alpha is equal to n1 sin theta. Um, n is the refractive index of air, alpha is the angle of incidence, and n1 is. Uh, presentation. Uh, presentation. Presentation is not there. Yes, sir. Is it okay? It is visible? Yes, sir. Okay. So, from Snell's law, n sin alpha is equal to n1 sin theta, where it is refractive index of uh, the air, alpha is the angle of incidence, which is equal to according to Snell's law, n1 sin theta, where n1 is the refractive index of four. Theta is angle of refraction. So again from the geometry in the triangle, you can write the theta is equal to pi by 2 minus theta t, where um, theta is, uh, is the angle of incidence at the cold cradle interface. So in equation 1, instead of theta, you can put pi by 2 minus theta c. So n sin of pi is equal to n1 sin pi by 2 minus theta c. So sin of 90 minus theta, that is uh, uh, cos theta c you can write n sin alpha is equal to n1 cos theta c. Other uh, finally it can be written as sin alpha is equal to n1 by n cos theta c, which is equation. Just you bring n to the right hand side. Also, you know that cos theta c is equal to 1 minus sin square theta c from the properties of uh, this uh, cos at sin, cos theta c is equal to under root 1 minus sin square theta c equation 4. So one you know these steps. I'll do one or two minutes.
Shall we proceed? Will you take this uh, three steps? Students? Sir, one show previous slides. The first equation is n sin alpha is equal to n1 sin theta from Snell's law. You take this one. Shall I proceed? Yes, sir. Then from the figure, theta is pi by 2 minus theta c. So instead of uh, theta, you can substitute pi by 2 minus theta c in the equation 1. So you will be getting n sin alpha is equal to n1 cos theta c or sin alpha is equal to n1 by n cos theta c. Equation 3. Also cos theta c is equal to under root 1 minus sin square theta c. Again, by applying Snell's law to four cladding interface, we have n1 sin theta c is equal to n2 sin 90 because it is the condition for total internal reflection. Because the light ray is traveling in the core medium, the refractive index is n1. It is incident at the core cladding interface by making an angle theta c. So n1 sin theta c is equal to n2. n2 is the refractive index of cladding sin 90 or n1 sin theta c is equal to n2 because sin 90 is 1 or sin theta c is equal to n2 by n1. So in equation 3 actually we have cos theta c is equal to 1 minus sin square theta c. Instead of sin square theta c you can substitute n2 by n1 whole square. And also the substituting value in equation 3 Actually, equation 3 is you have sin alpha is equal to n1 by n cos theta c. So, sin alpha is equal to n by n1 by n cos theta c is under root 1 minus n2 by n1 whole square. Or sin alpha is equal to under root, here small mistake is there, n square you should get n1 square minus n2 square by n square because if you take LCM, it is n1 square minus n2 square by n1 square. Once it comes out of the root, it will be root of n1 square minus n2 square uh, by n1 into n1 by n. So n1 n1 gets cancelled. If you bring this n into the square root, it is n square. Anyhow, it is the refractive index of a. It doesn't matter. The value is 1 only. So sin alpha is equal to under root n1 square minus n2 square. Please note down these steps. It's a simple uh, geometry only. In equation 7, sin alpha is root of n1 square minus n2 square by n square. Because it is out of root, if you bring this into the root, it will become n square. Shall I proceed, girls? Yes, sir. Therefore, now, as we discussed in the medium, uh, uh, one uh, it is a, the refractive index n is equal to 1, therefore sin alpha is equal to under root n1 square minus n2. Therefore, numerical aperture, numerical aperture is equal to sin alpha that is equal to under root n1 square minus n2 square. So, this is the expression for the numerical aperture of an optical fiber having n1 as the refractive index of four and n2 as a refractive index of flat. So, the numerical aperture it represents the light gathering capacity of an optical fiber which is a dimensionless, uh, dimensionless quantity and less than unity. So this is the expression for the numerical aperture of an optical fiber paper. Because alpha it is represented in terms of sin alpha where alpha is the entry angle. So how much light can be collected, how much light enters in the left end of the optical fiber is represented by sin alpha which is equal to under root n1 square minus n2 square. So it is the n1 and 2 are the refractive indices for the materials of core and cladding respectively. In brief, once again, I will explain. Numerical aperture represents the light gathering capacitor in optical fiber. 
considered an optical fiber consisting of porous refractive index N1 and uh, cladding of refractive index N2. Light ray XA incident at an angle alpha with respect to the axis and it gets refracted by making an angle of theta. This refracted ray AB again incident at a point B at the pore cladding interface making an angle theta C with respect to the alpha. So this is actually the description and uh, uh, from the geometry uh, we can uh, uh, using Snell's law you can write n sin alpha is equal to n1 sin theta where n is refractive index of a alpha is angle of incidence n2 is refractive index of core and theta is angle of refraction so from this again you can write also from the geometry theta is equal to pi by 2 minus theta c because they are interfacial angles so substituting in equation 1 n sin alpha is equal to n1 sin instead of theta, you can put pi by 2 minus theta c. This is sin 90 minus theta c, which is cos theta c. The same we have represented here. n sin alpha is equal to n1 cos theta c. Or sin alpha is equal to n1 by n cos theta c equation. And also we know that from the properties of triangles, cos theta c is equal to under root 1 minus sin square theta c. And again, at the core cladding interface, we are considering Snell's law which is n1 sin theta c is equal to n2 sin 90, where n1 is refractive index of core, theta is theta c is the angle of incidence at core cladding interface, n2 is refractive index of cladding, and it is satisfying the condition for total internal reflection, so it should be 90. So from this you can write n1 sin theta c is equal to n2, or sin theta c is equal to n2 by n1. Um, from equation 4, we have cos theta c is equal to under root 1 minus n square theta c, and you can put these values, it should be 1 minus n2 by n1 whole square. Then finally, in the expression equation 3, we have uh, sin alpha is equal to n1 by n cos theta c. Cos theta c, you put under root 1 minus n2 by n1 square, n1 whole square. By simplifying this, you can obtain sin alpha is equal to under root n1 square minus n2 square by n square will be getting. But n is the refractive index of a, which is nothing but uh, equal to 1. So finally, we will be getting sin alpha is equal to under root n1 square minus n2 square. Therefore, numerical aperture is equal to sin alpha, which is under root n1 square minus n2 square. This is the expression for numerical aperture and it represents the light gathering capacity of, of an optical fiber, which is a dimensionless one. So, any doubts in this numerical aperture, students? Shall I proceed for the next one? Anyhow, we will share these notes. You can take these notes also. Boys, respond please. Girls, you are listening or? Uh, huh? No, boys are not responding. So, another concept is acceptance angle. And one more thing you should remember in some books, the angle of incidence is represented as alpha. In some books, it is represented as i. Some books, it is represented as theta m. Whatever it is, you should understand the concept. So, acceptance angle is, you know the principle of uh, optical fiber. When light ray enters into the core, it suffers multiple reflections due to total internal reflection at the core cladding internal phase. And thus, this ray travels from one end of the optical fiber to the other end of the optical fiber. So let us assume, as we discussed in numerical aperture, the light ray makes an angle alpha with the axis of the fiber, and this is get refracted into the core by making an angle of uh, theta. And again, if incident on the core cladding interface with the angle theta is equal to 90 minus r. So uh, if theta is greater than critical angle, that means the angle of incidence at the core cladding interface is more than critical angle because the ray is traveling from denser medium to rarer medium and the angle of incidence is beyond critical angle, total internal reflection takes place and the light ray will be guided from the core medium. Let us take another light ray which is uh, incident on the fiber axis with an angle less than alpha. Then the angle of refraction R is also less than R and thus the angle of incidence at the core cladding interface is more than critical angle and hence it suffers total internal reflection and it uh, can be propagated in the optical fiber. So, for all light rays which incident at the um, left side of the optical fiber, if they make an angle of incidence less than alpha, then 
the um, angle of refraction for them is less than r and the uh, angle of incidence at the core cladding interface is more than the critical angle total internal reflection takes place and it suffers uh, multiple reflections and it can be uh, guided from the optical fiber so this alpha this is called as the maximum acceptance angle or maximum entry angle so up to that all rays can be allowed to pass through the core so the total internal reflection takes place suppose a light ray making an angle uh, more than this angle of incidence then the angle of refraction is also more than angle r and the angle of incidence at the core cladding interface is less than critical angle so it escapes through the cladding uh, so cladding material so total internal reflection will not take place i mean to say there is a limitation for the light ray to enter in the optical fiber cable at the left side so one up to a maximum value of angle which is called as acceptance angle or maximum acceptance angle so up to that all light rays they enter in the left end of the optical fiber they get refracted again they incident at the core cladding interface making an angle more than critical angle and thus total internal reflection takes place so this alpha is called as maximum acceptance angle represented by alpha is equal to i f so from the definition numerical aperture we have sin alpha it can be replaced with i m so sin i m it is actually under root n1 square minus n2 square so it can be written as n1 square minus n2 square whole to the power of half because we are uh, representing in this way by eliminating root again it can be simplified as n1 plus n2 into n1 minus n2 whole to the power of half but n1 plus n2 is approximately equals to 2n1 because there is very slight difference the difference in refractive index matters a lot than the combination of refractive index so n1 plus n2 mathematically for mathematical convenience can be approximated as 2n1 therefore this can be written as sin im is equal to 2n1 into n1 minus n2 whole to the power of half then let us define delta is equal to n1 minus n2 by n1 or n1 minus n2 is equal to delta into n1 where delta is called as core cladding index difference thus sin im becomes it is 2n1 into n1 um, minus n2 actually it can be written as delta n1 so this is delta n1 whole to the power of half again you can uh, take this as uh, 2n1 square into delta whole to the power of half hence the numerical aperture which is equal to sin im can be written as n1 into under root 2 delta so this is uh, the expression for uh, acceptance angle where im is called as maximum acceptance angle or maximum entry angle so this is the another way of representing the numerical aperture numerical aperture is equal to sin im which is n1 into under root 2 delta where delta is core cladding index difference which is represented by n1 minus n2 by n1 or n1 minus n2 is equal to delta n1 is this okay so there is a limitation for the light ray to enter in the left end of the optical fiber so the total internal reflection takes place it suffers multiple reflections up to the angle of incidence so this angle of incidence is called as maximum acceptance angle or maximum entry angle up to that all light rays can be allowed to pass through optical fiber and they suffer a total internal reflection and they can be guided through the optical fiber suppose a light ray making an angle of incidence more than this alpha then the angle of refraction is also more than r so that the angle of uh, incidence at the core cladding interface is less than critical angle so total internal reflection will not take place it escapes through the cladding material so there is a limitation for the light ray to enter the optical fiber up to that angle that it permits all the light rays and this is called as maximum acceptance angle because which is represented by alpha is equal to i m so sin alpha is equal to sin i m which is uh, n1 square minus n2 square whole to the power of half it is n1 plus n2 into n1 minus n2 whole to the power of half but n1 plus n2 can be conveniently taken as 2n1 therefore sin i m is equal to 2n1 into uh, n1 square minus n2 square whole to the power of uh, half 
let us assume that delta is equal to n1 minus n2 by n1 where delta is called as four cladding interface index difference therefore sin im is equal to because uh, 2n1 into uh, delta n1 whole to the power of half and uh, it can be n1 can be taken out so it is a two uh, if you take this one from under root it can be written as uh, 2n1 square delta whole to the power of half therefore human temperature or sin im can be written as n1 into under root 2 delta so this is the expression and im is called as maximum acceptance angle here a square is missing in the expression by giving out so I'll uh, view because it is sin im is equal to 2n1 into n1 minus it is correct only n1 minus n2 only uh, that uh, right is uh, root is uh, better you this one uh, you delete this one it's not there then everything will be fine is it okay the derivation girls yes sir boys Yes, sir. Okay. So one more small topic. This I explained today, and I stop here. Then you take the heading types of optical fibers. Types of optical fibers, and you take this uh, chart. Is this visible? Chart types of optical fibers. So, basing on the refractive index profile, basing on the modes of propagation, basing on the materials, optical fibers are classified. So, optical fibers they are classified as um, basing on their uh, refractive index profile, basing on their modes of propagation, and basing on the material. Which materials we are using for the uh, fabrication of an optical fiber like that um, they are uh, um, classified um, based on the refractive index profile optical fibers are classified into step index optical fiber and the second one is gradient index optical fiber so it is based on the refractive index profile again based on the modes of propagation they are classified as single mode optical fibers and the multi mode optical fibers so in brief, in general, they are classified as step index single mode optical fiber, then step index multi mode optical fiber, then graded in index multi mode optical fiber. So basing on the modes, they are classified into a single index, a step index single mode, step index multi mode, and graded index multi mode. And basing on the material, they are classified as glass glass optical fiber, plastic plastic optical fiber, plastic. And ceramics and the combination species materials they are classified as like that. Only different polymers and alloys are also not in the coming for the fabrication of uh, optical fiber. It depends in what uh, application, what uh, light source you are taking based on that, the material can be changed. So they can be glass, glass, both core and cladding are uh, um, made up of uh, glass only, sometimes plastic, sometimes plastic, and the polymers also, pieces, materials are also there. And uh, basing on the refractive index profile, they are classified as a step index and the grid index. And basing on the modes of propagation, they are classified as single mode optical fibers and multi mode optical fibers. Again, uh, we have a single index, uh, sorry, step index single mode, step index multi mode, grid index multi mode optical fibers are possible. So, this is the broad classification of optical fibers. We will discuss what actually step index and grid index. And also single mode and multi mode optical fibers like that. Let's you take this uh, chart. Shall I proceed, students? Yes, sir. So, basing on the modes of propagation, so first you should understand what actually the mode of propagation. It's not plain in the syllabus, only for understanding sake. So, a light ray is allowed to launch at one end of the optical fiber within the acceptance code, so the total internal reflection takes place. 
So not all the light within the acceptance cone propagate both. Only specific directions are allowed. Of course, the light cannot be all directions cannot be allowed. Only specific directions which satisfy the condition of a constructive interference so that it can be guided through the optical fiber. So the rays traveling in these specific directions because it is fabricated and the direction of the light is guided in such a way that constructive interference takes place within the core material so that it can be um, propagated through the material. So the rays which travel in the specific directions or specific directions are called as modes of propagation. So, so again they are classified as single mode and uh, multi mode optical fibers. If only one um, pulse at a time is allowed to pass through the core material, one mode then it is called as uh, single mode optical fiber. So in single mode optical fiber, the core diameter is very narrow and only one signal is allowed at a time. That means initially one signal is allowed, after then some time gap will be given, second signal is allowed to pass through the material like that only one signal at a time can be allowed to pass through the cable. Um, fiber cable, then it is called as a single mode propagation. If you see the green shaded one is core material and surrounded by cladding, only one wave is allowed to pass through at a time, then it is called as a single mode optical fiber. In this, the core diameter is very narrow. And the second category is uh, multi mode. In multi mode, because of the high diameter, wider diameter of the core, more than one signal can be allowed at a time. Two or three signals can be sent without any distortion. And uh, this is called as multi mode optical fiber. So, fiber cables with narrow core diameter allows only one signal at a time is called as a single mode optical fiber. And uh, more than one signal, two or more signals can be sent at a time for optical fibers in which the core diameter is uh, considerably high. Uh, in those uh, optical fiber, two or three signals can be sent at a time, and this is called as multi mode optical fiber. So if only one mode is allowed to pass through the core, then it is called as single mode. The core diameter is very narrow. If two or three are allowed to pass at a time signals, then it is called as multi-mode optical fiber. So more number of uh, uh, signals can be sent at a time in this material. So in this way, they are um, um, categorized as a single mode optical fibers and multi-mode optical fibers. So in single mode, right side here is not uh, beyond the scope of the syllabus, so only these top four points you know, only one mode of propagation is possible and the core diameter is very narrow, so the refractive index difference is also very small, so n one n a slightly difference, so total internal reflection takes place, so here no degradation of signal using traveling through the fiber, therefore more suitable for communication, so almost the attenuation loss or the signal loss is very minimal here, and uh, they can be you know, used for uh, communication and uh, they are very costly because fabrication method is very difficult. You have to choose the material so that, so that the refractive index is slightly different. Further, you need uh, the cost is very high. And these materials, the process of logic of light, because, the, because of the narrow core diameter launching of the light into the cable also, little bit uh, tedious for this, but there is an advantage. Because of if you could able to make this optical fiber with a narrow core diameter, then without any much loss, the light can be propagated from one end of the optical fiber to the other end of the optical fiber. So here single mode, only one mode, one signal can be sent at a time. They have small core diameters, and the refractive index differences are also slightly different. And uh, there is no degradation because um, of this uh, difference in very small difference in the refractive index. Therefore, they are suitable for communication. Uh, they are very costly because the fabrication method is very difficult because joining of two uh, fibers having small core diameter and the slight different, slightly different refractive indices. It is little bit, little bit costly, costlier. But uh, and also the process of launching of light at the left end of the optical fiber is also very tough for this material. And uh, whereas for uh, multi-mode optical fibers. So here many modes, any signals can be sent at a time, many modes of propagation is possible because these fibers have larger core diameter and uh, as you compare with single mode, the difference between the refractive indices of core and the cladding is large in this case. Due to multi-mode transmission, dispersion is also large because more, more overlapping of these uh, light pulses 
because we are sending at a time they can overlap some distortion will be there so these are uh, less suitable for communication or uh, they are not costly because the fabrication method is a uh, little bit uh, easier when you comparing with uh, uh, single mode optical fiber so the process of launching of light into fiber is very easy because uh, of the wider diameter of the core and the joining of two from fibers to core material and the cladding is also very very simple in this case so in ordinary one you need to send uh, even some uh, you can address the distortion you can use multi board because more data can be sent at a time here but distortion will be there single mode there is no distortion but uh, one by one we should send the pulses so this is the difference between a single mode optical fiber and multi mode optical fiber so these derivations only just for understanding only they are not important as far as the syllabus is concerned only one uh, so previous one is the basing on the modes of propagation the optical fibers are classified into single mode and multi mode now again basing on the refractive index profiles the um, optical fibers are classified into step index optical fiber and degraded optical fiber so in this uh, step index optical fiber the core has a uniform diameter n1 and the cladding has a uniform diameter n2 and n1 is greater than n2 so this type of uh, material these are called as step index optical fiber so in step, step index optical fiber the core has uniform refractive index of n1 the cladding is also having a uniform refractive index of n2 and uh, n1 is greater than n2 so what happens only at the core cladding interface total internal reflection takes place and the light can be guided in the optical fiber so this type of material optical fiber this is called as uh, step index optical fiber but the graded index optical fiber in this uh, the core has a non uniform refractive index that decreases gradually from the center towards core cladding interface that means number of core uh, layers are there at the center the refractive index is n1 and the layers the refractive index of each and the layer, each layer is decreasing that means at each and every level the light rays traveling from denser medium to rarer medium because the refractive index is non uniform for the core there is no need of cladding here from at the center the core has a uh, uh, high refractive index and initially another coating is done but the refractive index is little bit lower so the light is traveling from denser medium to rarer medium so here um, at each and every level there is a positivity of total internal refraction so this optical fiber this is called as graded index optical fiber so in single uh, step index uh, optical fiber due to constant refractive index of core the rays get ref uh, reflected at the core cladding interface only it is of reflective type cable so when when we send more than one signal they do overlap and output not match with input so this is the disadvantage in taking step index optical fiber but in uh, in graded index optical fiber due to decrease in the core refractive index towards the cladding the light ray is getting refracted within the core and takes the critical path because at each and every layer there is a possibility of uh, total internal reflection so it is a refractive type of cable when we send more than one signal they do not overlap because of the difference in refractive indices at each and every level of uh, the core and cladding so this is a, there is an advantage of this using this very extra optical fiber so when we send more than one signal is uh, more signals are sent uh the distortion is um, less if we compare with uh, step index optical fiber so only the difference between step index optical fiber and the graded index optical fiber is in step index optical fiber the core has a uniform refractive index n1 and the cladding has a uniform refractive index n2 and n1 is greater than n2 here only at the core cladding interface if the angle of incidence is more than critical angle it satisfies total internal reflection and the ray gets multiple reflections and it can be propagated so only at that level only core cladding interface only total internal reflection possible whereas in graded index optical fiber the core has a non uniform refractive index that decreases gradually from the center towards cladding that means at the center of the fiber it has maximum refractive index and it decreases as you move towards the cladding so the light ray always will be refracted light ray always will be traveling from denser medium to rarer medium at each and every level so that it takes a helical path in step index optical fiber it is a reflective type cable and only 
even though you send more than one signal, two signals are there. Because of this nature, uh, there is a distortion. Whereas in grid index optical fiber, the refractive index will be changing from the center of the core towards core gradient interface. There is no much overlap and the distortion is uh, minimized in graded index optical fiber. So this is the classification of optical fibers based on refractive index of fiber. The same here it is uh, expressed. The refractive index of the core gradient is uniform throughout and undergoes an abrupt change at the interface of core gradient. And in this uh, in the index profile is the form of a step. These fibers are called a step index. Only uh, at the core gradient interface, the refractive index will be changed. So the diameter of the code is about 50 to 200 micrometers per multi-mode and 8 to 10 micrometers per single-mode fibers. So the transmitted optical signal is in the form of a very linear base. All these are in the optical fiber communication system. Uh, information is transmitted in the form of pulses. So this is a uh, step index optical fiber and the graded index optical fiber. Here the refractive index of the code medium is very, made to very parabolic manner because the refractive index uh, decreases gradually from the center of the core towards the core gradient interface. So the refractive index gradually falls with the increase of radius uh, and at the core gradient interface matches with the refractive index of the gradient. So number of signals even though you allow to pass the grid index fiber, the distortion is uh, less if you compare the step index optical fiber. So this is the difference between uh, um, the core step index optical fiber and the gradient index optical fiber. So in this uh, today's session, uh, we have discussed first the expression for the numerical aperture. Numerical aperture represents the light gathering capacity of optical, optical fiber, which is a dimensionless quantity and which is less than unity. And the expression is given by sine alpha is equal to under root n1 square minus n2 square. Then maximum acceptance angle also we have discussed. There is a limitation for the light ray to enter the end of the optical fiber so the total internal reflection takes place. So that is called as maximum entry angle or maximum acceptance angle. In terms of core cladding index difference, we can write the sin alpha m or sin im is equal to n1 under root 2 delta, where delta is core cladding index difference given by m1 minus m2 by n1. And uh, above that, total internal reflection may not take place. Below this only total internal reflection takes place and the alpha which is IM is called as maximum entry angle or maximum acceptance angle. Then the classification of optical fibers they can be by three ways, basing on the refractive index profile, basing on the modes of propagation or basing on the um, materials. So they can be of uh, glass and glass, mm -hmm. they can be of uh, um, plastic or plastic or combination of plastic and polymers, different types of uh, fibers are possible. And uh, only one signal is allowed to pass through a material, optical core material, then it is called a single mode. The core diameter is very narrow in this case. If number of signals, one, to one or more than one signal can be sent in the fiber, then it is called as uh, multi mode optical fiber. Number of signals can be sent at the time. The core diameters are uh, large comparing to uh, single mode optical fiber. So, data in communication, single mode is uh, very useful because without any distortion, data can be communicated. But the fabrication cost is high for these materials. So this is single mode and multi mode. And basing on the refractive index profiles, optical fibers are classified into step index optical fiber and graded index optical fiber. So in step index of optical fiber, you know, core has a uniform refractive index. Caladin is also having uniform refractive index, and uh, n1 is greater than n2. Only at the core cladding interface, at that only total internal reflection takes place. Only two steps are possible. So in uh, gradient index optical fiber, the core has a non-uniform refractive index. So at the center of the core, uh, it has a refractive index, a high refractive index, which decreases gradually when you move towards core gradient interface. The advantage here is once the light ray enters at the axis of the fiber, immediately it travels from denser medium to denser medium. There is a possibility of total internal reflection. Similarly, it you know, decreases gradually even if there is nothing. Um, Total internal reflection is not possible. It goes in the, some in a little bit further direction. Again, it is traveling from denser medium to denser medium. So total internal reflection takes place. So it takes a helical path. So without any much distortion, the light can be propagated from one end of the optical fiber to the other end of the optical fiber. So in this way, 
the optical fibers based on refractive index profile classified as step index optical fiber and the graded index optical fiber. So only um, one topic is there that is um, um, fabrication of fabrication of an optical fiber. One method is there double crucible method and uh, losses in optical fiber and applications. Tomorrow morning I have again class because from tomorrow onwards new timetable will be there. So you don't have class tomorrow. So from 10 to 11, my regular class is there as per the new timetable is concerned. I will complete this chapter this time for which I will start uh, wave mechanics also. Otherwise next week again, we will start uh, wave mechanics. Sir. So I can complete this unit by tomorrow. Anyhow, uh, today or by tomorrow, I will send the notes for both uh, these lasers as well as optical fiber. Thank you. Stop there. I take attendance. I have to attend a meeting now. When you have lab sessions, students? On, on 11th, sir. But 11th is on, a holiday. 11th is a holiday. So 12th, you have any labs? No, no sir. 15th. So 15th. Again, you should come on. 15th, which lab you have? All three Only labs. All three labs you have. So you have some advantage now. Okay, respond for the attendance. Roll number 61. Present, sir. 62. Present, sir. 65.